Hey, this is Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love, welcoming you back to the Love You podcast, where you're going to learn everything you need to know about dating, relationships, men, sex, and pretty much everything else. Uh, and I'm excited for today's episode. We're going to talk about why it's tough to be a modern man. Um, so why would I do a podcast for women about what it's like to be a guy? Well, let's flip it over. Imagine there was a world in which men tuned into podcasts to understand the challenges of being a woman. Imagine how much more aware, sympathetic men would be to you if they really took the time to understand you. So if my brand on evanmarkcats.com is understand men, find, find love, this is the part of understanding men that um, probably gets undersold, certainly in, in the mass media. Um, and so I, I'm not trying to heap um, uh, tons of unwarranted sympathy on straight white men. Um, but I do think that in the national dialogue, um, these guys are kind of often forgotten and they have their own set of problems which are often not considered. Now what's interesting, um, or I always found it interesting, was that years ago when I was in, uh, an amateur <laughs> dating coach and just curious and asked people some odd questions. I remember asking women uh, sort of randomly, would you rather be a woman or a man? Um, and despite what most women would tell me is a male-dominated old boys network patriarchy, you have to work twice as hard, glass ceiling right, world, not one woman I spoke to said that she would rather be a man. Now, uh, I ask you that same question. I would ask you to ask yourself, would you rather be a woman or a man? And so I, I don't think it's necessarily telling. Um, I think it might just be a case of identity. If, you gr if you've grown up as a woman and you're comfortable being a woman, you can't imagine life as anything else. We all like, presumably like ourselves, like our identity, so therefore you wouldn't change. But it, it does... It does make one wonder, um, why wouldn't you want to be a man? Well, he here are some of the reasons that you might not want to be a man. Um, and, and again, let's go back to the sort of the national dialogue. Right? There's, there's not much talk about masculinity, really. If there's any talk about masculinity, it's through the prism of, of women, about women, can they have it all, um, or have they become too masculine? Um, can they strike work-life balance? Um, and and I'm, I'm a big reader, so you'll see these stories, New York Times, Washington Post, Slate, Salon, um, The Atlantic, really deep explorations um, from women by women about what it's like to be a modern woman. I just don't think there's nearly as much talk about what it's like to be a man. Right? Are our roles changing? Are our roles static? Are we expected to be the men from the 1950s, the protector or provider? Are we expected to evolve? Um, can we theoretically do both? I just don't think there's as much talk about it. Um, so yeah, while it still might be a man's world, technically, um, more male CEOs, more male Congress people, etc., You've got over 50% of women, right, by far uh, more women are college graduates. You've got 33% more women graduating college uh, every year, and like an, an absurd uh, dis misrepresentation. Um, and so time marches on, uh, roles change, and from where I sit, and maybe it's because I'm sort of at the center of this, this conversation on the internet, it seems like women and men are more confused and resentful than ever before. So I know this is a bit meandering, but uh, stick with me on this one. Um, I think it's important when we're talking about what it's like to be a man, a, a, a typical man, not that there is such thing as a typical man, but what is expected of men and masculinity, we, we describe masculine energy and feminine energy. And I will remind you, I did not make up these terms, right? Uh, when I say masculine energy, it doesn't mean every man is this way. When I describe feminine energy, it doesn't mean every woman is this way. Right? But these terms, masculine and feminine, you can 
call them yin and yang. This is generally right what other people have turned have called these things. So masculine energy is about self, right? one's own personal identity, opinions, goals, dreams, destinations, conquering, winning. Right? It's about about pursuing relentlessly what you want. All right, so masculine is being out, being the person who goes out and gets things and, and fights for things. And, and sure enough, we, we see that men are more known for fighting and violence and rape. <laughs> right, it's the correlation between masculine energy and doing things that are somewhat selfish. Feminine energy, right, by this definition, is more about others, being others-centric. Right? Being conciliatory, making sure everybody is taken care of, listening, nurturing, supporting. Right? So if you hear this and you're saying, oh, so women are just not supposed to go out and get things and just supposed to be supportive? No. Now we're just talking about the, def the definitions that were given to me of masculine and feminine energy. Right? All of us should have a, a blend of both. Some tilt more in one direction than the other. And this goes for both men and women. I think the conundrum about all of this is that the best husbands generally are considered the ones who are the most feminine, right? the ones who listen and are supportive and are patient and are easygoing and flexible. Right? But they're not the men who do the best with women. The men who do the best with women attract the most women are the masculine ones. Right. We'll use for an example, right? Politicians and basketball players and rock stars and right, people who are uh, out there and confident and passionate. And they're really the center of their world. They're the sun and you're a planet who revolves around them. Now, you might be really attracted to that, right? but that rarely makes for a good partner. A good partner is the one who puts you up on some sort of pedestal and, and puts his energy into making your life better, right? Not his energy into having you make his life better. So we find ourselves at sort of cross purposes. Women are attracted to more masculine men, right? That's not something that you could just mentally kick and say, I'm, I'm no longer attracted to what I'm attracted to. Um, women are earning more college degrees. They don't need men the way they used to. Um, you could separate sex from marriage. So women are becoming more masculine. Men, um, some of them are changing and becoming more feminine and women are not necessarily responding to it. Right? It's the guy who says, you know, you could call me sometime if you want. Or, you know, hey, you know, we're just, we're just hanging out. Right? Or, you know, if you, know, if you feel really strongly, you could tell me, like, what, what do you want to do this, this weekend? And that's, that is, again, traditionally not masculine. Masculine is find a goal, set it, reach it. Just go out and do what you want. Looking for consensus, looking for approval, nice traits to have in a partner are often very frustrating for women who are looking for men to step up. Give me a call, make a plan, make a date. Don't just say, hey, you know, you kind of want to hang out? What do you want to do? All right. So it's gotten really, really blurry. And guys, don't, I don't know if guys could win. Um, are we happier? Are we, are we better off in this new egalitarian system? Well, no one's suggesting a throwback to the 50s where our roles were constrained just confined to this is what you do, right? My mom went from her father's house and moved in with my father, right? When she was 21 or 22 and, you know, didn't go to college and no one's suggesting uh, a throwback to that. I think we're just talking about the messiness that comes with this where men don't even know what their own roles are. And it seems like whatever they do, they're sort of damned if you do and damned if you don't, right? Like, Men are told that women are equal, but that they're supposed, to, but we're also supposed to pick up the check all the time. We're encouraged to be vulnerable, but then we're judged for being too sensitive or needy. And so 
I mean, let's just call call a spade a spade. You know, nice guys, nice guys might make for great husbands, but they often don't inspire attraction. They don't always do well with women. They get put into the friend zone. Right? You want the nice guy with an edge, right? the, the person I call the nice guy with balls. And it brings us to a, a paradigm. And this is something I wrote in my book, uh, Why You're Still Single, back in 2006. And it was, the chapter was called uh, Men Don't Go Both Ways. And uh, we talked about two archetypes. There's the Marlboro Man, and then there's the sensitive artist. Right? And they're both attractive for different reasons. The Marlboro Man is the strong, silent, stoic type. Right? He does not, he's got it all under control. You never worry about his strength for a second, right? He doesn't, he, he, he's, he's a rock. Um, and you're really attracted to his, his strength. You feel protected and secure in his presence. And there's this sensitive artist guy who is like your best girlfriend, right? He shares all his feelings with you. You know him intimately. You feel really, really connected to him. But part of sharing all his feelings with you is that he's vulnerable and sometimes he seems a little weak and sometimes he seems a little needy and sometimes he seems a little high maintenance. And so these are the two, two poles. Right? And the first guy, it's hard to feel, feel connected to him because he doesn't want to share his feelings. He doesn't want to talk about your feelings, but he feels safe in some primal masculine way. So I've got women who are like, well, why can't I just have both? Why can't I have th that both of those things in one guy. Well, understand that those are usually different guys, right? The Marlboro Man and the Sensitive Artist, they're, they're actually different men. Right? And you can't spend your whole life waiting for the Sensitive Artist to suddenly grow a pair and become the Marlboro Man. And the Marlboro Man is not gonna suddenly break down and, and start telling you the minutia of his day, right? Nor does he wanna hear yours. So most people, thankfully, are somewhere in between, but no matter where you land, you're probably going to be somewhat dissatisfied, right? And men, again, don't know what works. I right? don't know what you want um, because sometimes you don't even know what you want. You say, well, I'm attracted to this, but this works better for me. Like I'm often attracted to the Marlboro man, but I get along a lot better with the sensitive artist type, <laughs> but I'm not that attracted to the sensitive artist type because he's not enough of a Marlboro man. So, um, we have a conundrum, right? It's, and, and again, it, it's a shared conundrum, right? I'm telling you what it's like to be a guy, but I'm also, you know, reflecting, you know, holding up the mirror as to what it's like to date these guys. Um, the, 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 the ideal guy, right? The nice guy with balls, those balls, and that's his masculine side. That's the one with the strong opinions. And that guy does not want to be told what to do, right? And it takes a lot of self-awareness for that masculine guy to put his selfish needs to the side when he's in a relationship for the greater good of the relationship um, and still manage to feel like himself. I think it's been one of the, the bigger things that I've noticed as a, as a married man is I'm, you know, I'm a lot less, you know, uh, alpha than I used to be when I was only thinking of myself. Right, now my goal is how do I make my wife happy and my personal needs go aside. I'm not as opinionated. I'm not as difficult because there's no value to it, right? I mean, I'm making, you know, we're making decisions for, for two people or four people in my family. It's not, it's not just about me. So the very thing that might have drawn my wife to me, right, which was my decisive opinionated nature, um, I'm a lot more, honey, what do you want to do now than I used to be? <laughs> and... Um, uh, a lot of guys never, never embrace that part. So they, they, it becomes their needs over yours in a relationship. Um, and it creates a lot of friction, right? For both you expecting him to acquiesce to your needs and for him to have to change his identity that he had for all these years as a single guy now that he's married and it's not about him anymore. That's, that's a big sea change for a lot of guys to have to actually change their personality from being single to being married in order to be a good partner. So um, understand there's, there's a reason that I'm a coach for women and not for men. I think this is a conversation that a lot of men aren't having, um, can't have. Um, I mean, there's, there's websites like the Good Men Project or something like that.
but for, for the most part, I, I, I think this is something that men wrestle with internally. And uh, when we come back from the break, I'm going to get a little bit more personal. I'm going to explain from my own perspective uh, more about why it's harder than you might think to be a modern man. Uh, this is the Love You Podcast. My name is Evan Mark Katz. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Back for the second half of this podcast. We're going to continue to learn everything you need to know about dating relationships and men. Uh, today's topic is on, on why it's hard to be a modern man. And uh, a lot of people I know have never considered it. Certainly, virtually no men have considered what it's like to be a woman. I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think it's safe to say, I'll throw my gender under the bus, that most men have, have never even taken a half a second con to consider what it's like to be in a woman's shoes. Uh, I'm hoping that this dialogue that we're having today will help you understand some of the complexities of what it's like to be a guy, to have to be, to be the breadwinner, to be the man, to be invulnerable, um, and then find out that it's still never <laughs> good enough to be the breadwinner and the man and invulnerable. I remember when I was in high school asking my dad about his lack of friends uh, compared to my mom. Um, now, my dad was not like a unfriendly, taciturn guy. My dad was a, was a, a great guy, small business owner. Um, but most of his identity was, uh, you know, working to provide for the family and then spending time with his family. He wasn't a, he wasn't a hobbyist and, uh, again, didn't have poker buddies or anything like that. He was a family man. And um, I realized recently that I was, I was a lot like him, um, where I don't have any hobbies. I work and I provide for my family and I spend time with my family. And that's kind of all I do. There's a cost to this, right? It's not a good or a bad thing, but there, 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 there's a real epidemic of men who put all of their eggs in one basket or two baskets, right? And if their two baskets are work and family and one of those baskets breaks, um, let's say the family one does, he ends up getting divorced and he's just got work. What does he have now? He doesn't have spirituality. He doesn't have hobbies. He doesn't have friends. And this is what happens to a lot of guys. And men are socialized different than women. Right? We're biologically different and we're socialized different. Right? Um, I'm not even arguing with that. I'm just observing it. So, you know, men and women are equal, but we're different. Men have, have testosterone. Testosterone is a, is a thing. Um, you know, uh, men are more likely to rape and wage war than women. Uh, I have a, I have a three-year-old son who'll take anything and fight me. I have a daughter who is empathetic and asks me how I'm feeling. I mean, they're, they're very, very different. And I know that's just a, one anecdote, but um, spend, spend time with a, a, a bunch of little kids and you could see large scale differences um, on the whole between boys and girls. Um, and we see this continue into adulthood, don't we? Women are more likely to listen, right? And you know, the stereotype goes and a woman is, is venting. She just wants to be heard, right? She doesn't, want, she doesn't want the guy to come up with a solution to fix. She just wants him to listen to her. That's, that's very foreign to men. men. Men fix. They're not great listeners, right? Just what can I do? So women listen to each other. They hug, they touch, they're affectionate. Um, they're more likely to find ways to get along as opposed to ways to be divisive, right? It's, it's much more subtle language that women speak. Um, and it's more tuned to nuance. Now, there's a downside to this too, right? which is that women can sometimes overthink things, right? Um, you know, he signs an email, uh, talk to you later instead of love, and suddenly you're flipping out, oh my God, this relationship is over. And sometimes you could overthink things because you're so attuned to nuance. But for the most thing, most part, insensitivity is a good thing. It gives you better people skills. Uh, if you've gone out with a bunch of guys who seem to have poor people skills, it's not a coincidence. 
It's really not a coincidence. Um, men don't have as many friends. They're not as good at friendship. Um, it's a, a bunch of guys who put everything into their jobs and they've been taught that the way to befriend guys is to bust their balls. All right? If you know any guys, that's what they do. They, they make fun of each other and they cut each other down. Um, and some of it's funny and I think it's useful for women to understand that piece of men, that, that playful, truthful, teasing part of men. But there's not much softness when it comes to men. And then they bring that into a marriage and they can't understand why you can't, why you're so sensitive about things, right? Because to him, you know, this is just the way of the world. This is the way people talk to each other, right? Again, there's a difference in general between men and women and their communication styles. And, and I know that I'm more prone to communicate like a woman, I think. Um, it's not that I have, have trouble being made fun of or making fun of someone, but I, I do appreciate kindness, and I think guys could kind of go over the, the top with it. I remember years ago, um, I asked a good friend of mine, we'd all watch football together, and I'm, I'm a big sports fan, know everything about everything when it comes to sports. But if you're watching a football game for three and a half hours, you can't talk about sports for the entire time. So I would always talk about other stuff because I'm engaged in the world and I would ask people what's going on with their job and what's going on with their relationships. And, and I, at one point I asked my closest friend in this football watching group, I said, I feel uh, estranged from the other guys in some way. And he said, he goes, that's because you talk like a chick. <laughs> He's like, you know, you know, other people are just, you know, perfectly content watching the game and like you want to talk about stuff and you want to go deep and that's not you know that's just not what we do and so I realized that the onus was on me to cordon off that part of myself right the part that likes to have these kind of conversations and the part that likes to go deep when I was in that setting watching football with guys on a Sunday afternoon and so it's just an anecdote it's not everything, but if that's the way guys are, right, those stereotypes of not talking about anything of any depth or meaning, how are guys learning to communicate? Well, the only ways that, the way they could learn to communicate is through relationships, right? And you're already behind the eight ball. You've been communicating with your girlfriends um, on a deeper, more intimate, sensitive level forever. Right? Lots of guys have no background in doing this and are completely tone deaf when they find themselves in a relationship with a communicative woman. Right? And they'll, you know, the, the, their reactions are just stop talking so much. That's, right? So it's, this is not a defense of guys. This is an observation of how they're often really handicapped when it comes to these kind of uh, relationship discussions. Um, These men often, as I intimated earlier in the podcast, wake up one day at 40 or 50 or 60 and find themselves with no wife, no communication skills, and no friends. And that's probably the main reason that I'm, I'm doing a podcast specifically on this subject because as a woman, it's very important that you understand that this is real and this is out there. Why do se seemingly normal guys go on a date with you and suddenly want to marry you. Well, that's because you are their oasis, maybe their mirage in a desert. Right? You're, the, you're the floaty device in the ocean when they're sinking. These guys have nothing. So they have a connection with someone on a first date. They just want to lock it in right away because they have nothing else in their life. All right? And... They're expected to remain tough and invulnerable and not complain. And they have no one to share with this. Right? Self-help is for weaklings. I don't want to go to therapy. And all these guy stereotypes, they come from somewhere. Right? And they're self-perpetuating and they're self-defeating. Right? 
not every guy, every situation, so let's not make it out to that. But if you've noticed right, that there's some angry guys out there, and there's some awkward guys out there, and there's some lonely guys out there, and there's some guys who the second you meet them just want to pair up with you as if they didn't have a life before, it's because they didn't have a life before. Right. Um, my mom happens to be in a relationship right now, but for years after my dad's death, she was perfectly content being single. Perfectly content because she would go and set up a canasta group and go to the clubhouse at, you know where she lived in Florida and, and uh, sit by the pool and go gardening and take a bunch of girls on a cruise. And she, I mean, she, my mom is a social person and she kept herself busy in retirement and really didn't need male companionship. Um, if my wife got hit by a bus, I would have no idea what to do with myself. I would have no idea how to put anything back together. I mean, I have friends. We have a lot of couple friends, but a couple of friends uh, don't hang out with single people. Um, I have long, lifelong friends, but they're also similar positions to me. Uh, uh, you know, big responsible jobs, wife, uh, kids. So. What happens to the guy? I mean, again, I ask this of myself. It's probably, you know, there, it's, my, it's my own fear talking. It's like, what would happen to me if I didn't have my wife? All right. When there's a, a lot of people I like, but unlike women who, you know, uh, their best friends will talk to them every day, every week, I have best friends that I'll talk to two or three times a year. It's different. All right. It's very different. And it's a, there's a burden on men to have to, be men, right? Be taller, stronger, make more money, not complain, make all these decisions, and have no one to talk to about it. When you get married, um, it may be, maybe, not everybody, the, the culmination of everything you, you always sought, the thing that you were always looking for. Um, for him, it's possible that it's changing his entire identity all right. from the charismatic, self-serving um, guy who did whatever he wanted with his career, threw himself into his work, threw himself into his hobbies, um, slept with who, who he want, when he wanted, total you know, freedom being unencumbered. All right. And that's the thing that he got good at. That's the thing that he built up over 30, 40 years. And then he, the second he puts a ring on his finger, he has to retire it. <laughs> right. I remember I felt that. Um, again, not something that's pretty to talk about, but uh, the first six months of marriage, I, I was confused. I, like, I, I, I remember telling my wife, I was like, I don't know what to do at a party. When I used to go to parties, I would go around and do a lap and see who was cute. What do I do at a party if I can't talk to anybody? She goes... Well, you have other conversations that don't involve hitting on people. I was like, really? I, <laughs> that's new to me. <laughs> so I think, again, this is, this is my, sort of my, my jumbled thoughts. But he has, everybody's life changes when they get married. But I think men, men's identities might be affected more. Uh, and they're cutting off their old life. They may be cutting off their old friends. They move, to the, they move to the suburbs, they have kids, right? And it becomes a very different thing than the thing that he cultivated for himself before. And so I would think for you, it would be valuable to have some sympathy for these guys who haven't been taught the same sensitivities that women have been taught from a very, very young age, right? How to be communicative, how to be supportive, how to be proactive, uh, how to be sweet and sensitive and... Uh, giving in a million small ways and you know you'll find guys who do this it's not like we're talking about unicorns here but um, I think on a larger scale um, a lot of the guys that you're attracted to uh, will often fall short on these fronts uh, and have their own pain and frustration to deal with and I thought it would be useful to at least open up an exploration as to why so Thank you for joining me on this Love You podcast. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Next episode, we're going to talk about something really interesting, which is why men really do like the cool girl 
If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And most importantly, go to my website, www.evanmarkkatz.com. Give me your name and email address, and I will send you free dating and relationship advice as long as you need it. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Oh, 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 o